right, everyone, Caffeine Man here, and the Jaeger Bombs, Red Bull and Vodka, Four Loco, Core High Gravity, Juice, Ju, Juice, like Moose, Moose, Juice, I, I haven't heard of it before, Max, BAC, the CDC, the FDA, Alcohol Poisoning, yes, it is time for another caffeine safety video, and this one is about caffeine and alcohol coming right up. Hello again everyone, thank you so much for joining me today about this very important topic. I really do appreciate it. As some of you may know, I do like to do the occasional caffeine safety video. And although I primarily do energy drink reviews, I also am concerned with caffeine safety. And when I originally started my channel, I not only wanted to do energy drink reviews, but I also wanted to inform people about the safety of caffeine and not to drink too many energy drinks and overall caffeine safety in general. Unfortunately, a lot of these safety videos get lost in the sea of energy drinks that I review. Therefore, at the end of this video, I will include a playlist going over all of my informative caffeine safety videos so that you can see them all in one place because I have covered several topics as you will see on the screen and I hope you find those videos just as informative. But in today's video, I'm going to be going over several issues related to the topic of alcohol and caffeine. Now this video is not to speak negatively about alcohol and caffeine, so what I will be doing is giving you some numbers and stats so that you can see the facts on this topic and make your own decisions. I will also give you some real life samples and stories from people who have actually mixed caffeine and alcohol as well as the pros and cons of alcohol and caffeine. There's a lot of information to go over so let's get started. So where do we actually start? Well, let's start off with some of the basics about caffeine and alcohol and what effects they have on people. Caffeine, a central nervous system stimulant, essentially wards off drowsiness by suppressing rising andenosine levels. What is andenosine? Andenosine builds up in your brain throughout the day, acting on your central nervous system and helping regulate sleepiness and wakefulness. Caffeine is a way for people to kickstart their day by stopping the sleepy signals in your brain and perking you up. In the same regard, caffeine can help you stay awake when you're typically supposed to feel tired. Lots of college students have been known to use caffeine to help keep them up later than usual to help with their studies and everyday people use it for lots of reasons to help fight sleep away. Alcohol is quite different than caffeine in that it is a central nervous system depressant. This causes more endenosine to accumulate in your system which is why people feel sleepy after a few drinks. When you drink too much your body wants to shut down and causes you to pass out otherwise it may lead to alcohol poisoning. Passing out is your body's natural way to stop you from being poisoned. Our bodies, including our brain, want to survive and has many ways of doing that, including fight or flight, anxiety, and passing out, just to name a few. Now that we know how these things work independently, let's talk about what happens when we mix them together. When you combine caffeine and alcohol, some of these effects cancel each other out, leading to people being able to drink more, not completely feeling the effects of alcohol right away. Depending on how much a person can drink, some people that would normally get drunk after three drinks might be able to have double that before feeling its full effects. Different bodies and different metabolisms may vary these numbers. That is just an average number. Now, although some of these effects may cancel each other out it is definitely not all the effects. Alcohol can slow your reaction times, reduce your balance, and affect motor skills. One of the biggest myths out there is that caffeine will help you be more clear-headed and conscientious when you're drunk and that's simply not true. Sure, the caffeine can help reduce sleepiness when it comes to a long night of drinking, but it won't do anything about how alcohol affects your judgment or your motor skills. Your decision making and coordination will be just as impaired and you might not realize it because the caffeine Caffeine makes you feel more awake and on the top of your game, which could lead to some bad choices, which could be dangerous. We will get into that a little bit more later, but why don't we look at some numbers and some real life events. So do you remember Four Loco? And if so, do you remember why it was taken off the market? Four Loco was a 23.5 ounce can and had 156 milligrams of caffeine. That comes out to about 7 milligrams per ounce and your standard energy drinks such as Red Bull or Monster have about 10 milligrams per ounce. Besides caffeine, Far Loco also used taurine and guarana, common energy drink ingredients. This drink also had 12% alcohol. And can you guess who ruined it for everybody? You guessed it, those darn college students. Silly kids. Not long after the drink came out, colleges across the US began banning Four Loco after numerous student hospitalizations were caused from the drink, some even leading to death. 
several lawsuits were filed by the families claiming that their children's death was caused by Four Loco. Four Loco countered these lawsuits claiming alcohol abuse and underage drinking, basically saying that the students were at fault for over consuming the product. In November of 2010, the FTC, Federal Trade Commission, sent a warning letter to several caffeinated alcoholic producers, including the makers of Max, Juice, Core High Gravity, Moonshot, and Four Loco, urging them to take swift and appropriate steps to protect consumers. All of this prompted several states to seek out bans for Four Loco. With several lawsuits pending and the FTC's threat, the creators of Four Loco decided to jump ship and announced on November 17th, 2010, they would be removing the caffeine, taurine, and guarana from their product. Ever since then, it has been illegal to produce ready-to-drink alcoholic beverages with caffeine. Therefore, when you see bang alcoholic drinks or monster alcoholic drinks, drinks like Beast on the market, you might think that they have caffeine, but, but, but they don't. They're just trying to expand their beverage industry to make more money and hoping that some of the people buy it because they think they have caffeine without even looking at the ingredients. But even though it's illegal to produce RTD beverages with alcohol and caffeine, there are no laws against bars and nightclubs for making a drink for you. Thus, we get into the topic of Jaeger bombs. Now, right before I get into Jaeger bombs, I do want to preface what is considered to be dangerous to your body when it comes to alcohol and caffeine by several different medical standards. It is said that you should not go above 200 milligrams of caffeine mixed with enough alcohol to give your blood alcohol content level of 0.08. Of course, I doubt many of you know what that means, which is what I am here for. A standard drink is 0.02 BAC, so it would take you four drinks to get to 0.08. What constitutes a standard drink though? A 12 ounce beer, around 5% alcohol, eight or nine ounces of malt liquor, five ounces of wine, which is about 12% alcohol, and a 1.5 shot of 80 proof, 40% alcohol content. Just to give you an overall idea, those are considered a standard drink. Now we will look at what a Jaeger bomb is and if it's dangerous. A Jaeger bomb consists of one can of Red Bull at 80 milligrams of caffeine and one shot of Jägermeister liquor, which is 1.5 ounces of hard liquor. Therefore, if you have four Jäger bombs, you will be at the 0.08 alcohol content, but you will also be at 320 milligrams of caffeine, which is well over the recommended maximum amount. So if you stick to two, maybe three, you should be okay. But there are also lots of different things involved with that, which we'll talk about later, including metabolism, tolerances, and things like that. So how dangerous are these dangerous levels? Well, there can be a multitude of issues. It will raise your blood pressure. Pressure. So blood pressure is something to be concerned with. Increased blood pressure increases your chance of a stroke as well as a heart attack and it can also cause atrial fibrillation. So if anyone has heart issues they really shouldn't be mixing alcohol and caffeine but if you've watched my other safety videos on caffeine or just know in general if you have a heart condition you shouldn't be having caffeine in general let alone mixing it with alcohol. Another thing to keep in mind is that caffeine is a diuretic and alcohol is also a diuretic so if you're concerned consuming both of them at the same time, it is very easy to become dehydrated much more quickly. Dehydration could lead to simply having a dry mouth, feeling more thirsty, in which hopefully you don't have more alcohol and caffeine, all the way to feeling dizzy and lightheaded, and potentially leading to alcohol poisoning. Alcohol and caffeine can also irritate your stomach in several ways, increasing your stomach acids, which could cause or worsen gastritis and stomach ulcers. One of the most common occurrences though, is that it completely messes of your sleep patterns. The most common claim in studies done on the topic say that people never really had a problem falling asleep when they got home, but they had trouble staying asleep. You see, heavy alcohol consumption promotes sleep induction, but the stimulant effects of caffeine take over well after the alcohol is already metabolized. The average half-life of caffeine is six hours, which means the caffeine is still in your system 12 hours later, depending on your metabolism. And many people in the studies have said it is no fun to be awake and not being able to go back to sleep when you're hungover and all you want to do is sleep. In some cases, people woke up from being sound asleep because of increased heart palpitations. And in some cases, people were actually having panic attacks. But one of the most dangerous things about mixing alcohol and caffeine, we will go over in just a second, right after we discuss some of the reasons why people drink alcohol and caffeine, as well as some real life cases. So 
but why is it that people actually mix alcohol and caffeine? In one survey, a 24-year-old male who worked a 9-to-5 job Monday through Friday would always be happy that Friday would come, but although the weekend was coming up, he was still pretty tired on Friday night, but he still wanted to go out and have a few drinks with his friends. An energy drink will help him stay awake, as well as be able to have a couple of drinks with his friends. Another person in the study said that they just feel more energetic and awake while they're drinking, and it causes them to be a more happy drunk. Another person said they just like the flavor better. Alcohol doesn't always taste that great. And energy drinks, they're a bit sweeter and just adds a much nicer flavor to the drink overall. Some people even prefer alcohol and energy drinks because it covers up the taste so much, they like it even more than a lot of your common beers on the market. In a study in the UK, 55% of students reported that they mixed energy drinks with alcohol to cover up the flavor, make it taste better, while 15% of people said that they consumed them just to feel less drunk and drink more. This was all in one study in the UK, so I tried to find similar information in the US and it was a little bit difficult doing my searches for the same information, but I was able to find two separate studies with similar information. And in a study about people saying that it tastes better, 45% of the people in the US said they drink them to taste better. In a separate study, over 75% of students in the US admitted that they mix alcohol with caffeine so that they can drink more and stay drunk longer. Surprise, surprise for the US. But even though we talk about it potentially being dangerous, how dangerous is it? According to the CDC, excessive alcohol use is responsible for more than 140 deaths in the US each year. Other websites, such as the NCDAS, National Center of Drug Abuse Statistics, they report approximately 95,000 alcohol-related deaths in the United States. In searching through many other websites with similar statistics, the average number was between 95,000 and 150,000 deaths in the US each year. And although those numbers may vary, you get the idea of how large the number is. The NCDAS actually went as far as to provide some additional numbers stated that 10,511 deaths were attributed to drunk driving. 7,334 homicides have alcohol as a contributing factor. 1,043 Americans have actually drowned while under the influence of alcohol. 2,015 Americans have died from falling injuries under the influence of alcohol. And 2,200 people have actually died from alcohol poisoning. Now let's talk about some of the real dangers and concerns. Yeah, death is a concern to some people, but most people are probably going to think, man, I'm not really going to die from drinking. He's just trying to scare us. 95,000 is small compared to the billions of people in the world. So let's take a look of what can most likely happen to you. So far in this video, I've mentioned several times the dangers of caffeine and alcohol. And although there have been some mentions of potential stomach issues, I've also mentioned some heart issues. And I even gave you some stats on how many people die each year. But the largest and most important thing to point out, the most important thing that you should remember and take away from this video is that caffeine and alcohol will lead to impaired judgment. As mentioned earlier, even though you may feel more energetic, the effects of alcohol are still in your system, impairing your judgment and motor skills. According to the CDC, this mentality of mixing alcohol and caffeine will make you feel alert and less drunk increases the risk of alcohol-related injuries. The CDC provided the following information. Drinkers aged 15 to 23 who mix alcohol and caffeine are four times more likely to binge drink in high intensity, which is consuming six or more drinks per binge episode, than drinkers who do not mix alcohol and caffeine. Drinkers who mix alcohol and caffeine are reported to have higher rates of drunk driving or riding in the car with the driver who's intoxicated. Drinkers who mix alcohol and caffeine are more likely than drinkers who don't to have unwanted or unprotected sex. And drinkers who mix alcohol and caffeine, as opposed to those who don't, sustain higher alcohol related injuries, which could include falling, injuring themselves with items they could cut themselves with, and many other things due to impaired motor functions. The NIH, the National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, that, that, that's, that's, that's not the right amount of, that's not the right amount of letters. Uh, anyway, they report nearly 5 million visits to the emergency room for alcohol related issues. And why is that number so high compared to the other numbers? Well, the 140,000 that I mentioned earlier, 
was only based on the deaths in the US. The 5 million just mentioned are alcohol related that didn't lead to death, but caused a lot more issues that made them go to the ER. Now these are not specific alcohol and caffeine related issues. These are alcohol related issues. And although you definitely don't want to fall into that category of 140,000 deaths, do you really want to be part of the 5 million that go to the emergency room due to excessive alcohol consumption? Because when you drink too much, the chances are fairly high that you could go to the ER. And when you mix alcohol and caffeine, your chances go up even more for drinking too much alcohol. Five, mil five million, that's, that is a lot of ER visits just for alcohol related issues. That, that's, that's, that's a big, that's, that's, that's a lot. Now, all the information that I just provided to you was factual information that was taken from reliable medical websites, and the people's testimonies were from college students, as well as stories found in newspaper articles on legitimate newspaper websites. Now, besides all that information, some people do want to know my opinion on the topic. Although I do tend to keep my opinions to myself, a majority of my audience really likes to know what I think of it, and a small percentage of the trolls out there just want to cause controversy in the comments. Therefore, I preface that the following information is my opinion and I don't expect anyone to agree with me. That being said, I have three things that I want to mention on this topic. First off, I don't drink alcohol. I've never liked the taste of it and although my friends continue to try to expose me to new and different drinks from the age of 21, 21, to the age of 23, I never found anything that I liked just due to not liking the alcohol flavor. Throughout the following years, I developed quite the savings account. Man, drinking is so expensive. I mean, that is a bill all on its own. The amount of money people spend on alcohol, man, it's just, it's, it's why my savings account is doing so well and I can afford all these energy drinks. Second, everything in moderation. If you've watched any of my informational videos, you'll know that this is a typical theme for me. I'm not here to condone alcohol and caffeine altogether, but if you have it in moderation and know your limits, then everything in moderation should be safe for you. Some people can have three Jager bombs before they start feeling the effects of the alcohol, while others might be severely affected after just one or two. Between metabolism, alcohol tolerance, caffeine tolerance, and many other factors, there isn't one set number for everyone, so it is best to know your limits and best to have everything in moderation. Don't overdo it, know your limits. Third, and this could be the most important one, so hear me out, even though if you've already listened to me for this long, hang out until the end, we're almost there. Based on all the risks and the information I provided, I don't really understand how anyone could wanna put themselves at risk based on all that information. But I do understand one thing, not everyone knows about these risks. One of the reasons why I started my channel, among many reasons, was to help inform people about caffeine safety. It's not just about reviewing energy drinks, it's about consuming them responsibly. But unfortunately, my videos only reach a small audience. So I may be able to educate all of you on this topic, but there are still millions of people who don't know about caffeine safety or about mixing alcohol and caffeine. And for this specific topic, they may only learn about it once it's too late. It could be they learned it because they're in the hospital or worse, because they've injured or killed somebody due to overconsumption of alcohol and caffeine. Therefore, I I encourage you to share this information with everyone, whether it's having a conversation with family members and friends or someone you might be concerned about who does drink excessively, or even feel free to share this video so that people know the risks involved. Knowledge is power and we all have the power to potentially save lives with this information. I hope you all learned something in this video and I hope you can share this video with others to keep them informed as well. As promised, here is a playlist of all my caffeine safety videos. I hope you check some of them out. Also, feel free to check out caffeine man1.com we can find out a little bit more about me but you can also sign up for a newsletter going over what i went over last week what will be coming up next week all at caffeineman1.com thank you all for joining me i really do appreciate it and until next time have yourselves a great day or night